everyone welcome back to my diet journey from a biblical perspective this is part three is eating meat a sin now for many of you guys who may have come into veganism through the activist route I would say that maybe you may see my point of view maybe not I don't know but I have noticed this just from observation that many of my activist um, friends can almost take a religious tone to their movement of veganism and to such a degree that it almost seems as if it becomes a those that eat meat are sinful and are bad and those that don't are like the angels of society because they're they're helping animals but I feel like this almost theological mindset and I say theological because in a sense veganism is about converting people to a plant-based diet through the means of whether it's coercion or through manipulation of media and I don't mean to say that in a mean saying that in a negative tone by saying manipu by using the word manipulation but it's more so manipulating the person's emotions to get them to transition to veganism rather than what I see as a logical um, uh, way of doing it by addressing the intellect. Um, and some people do a really good job actually um, of doing that as well. I'm not saying that that's necessarily bad, but what I'm saying is there's almost an emphasis that if you eat meat, you're just this horrible person and you don't care about the environment or or you, you are like the worst individual that ever was born. I've seen that sentiment sort of done. And even when I was in Korea and there were vegan activists, there were some things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way in the way that they would promote it. For example, staining people's, you know, fur. But some people wore fox fur. And so sometimes you can't tell the difference, but to destroy someone's property, while they're walking to me was kind of rude um or to sort of hate on people who wear you know um animal products because we don't know where someone might be in their journey they may have inherit they may have either inherited it or have had it for a long time and then they became vegan but they've had it forever it's not you know it was something that they had prior to their knowledge and they may not be convicted to that but to force that conviction on someone else I think is in error because everyone should have um, their own uh, conviction and shouldn't be coerced into believing in anything and I believe that sentiment um, across the board that will that would be for politics that would be for religion and that would be for any decision that you make no one should be forced into um, making a decision without their true personal conviction um, the second thing I kind of wanted to touch on uh, was Peter's vision and the reason why I say that is because a lot of times Christians in and of itself kind of use this as a way of saying well you can eat anything but when you actually go through Peter's vision it has absolutely nothing to do with food at all um, it uh, actually has to pertain to how we treat each other which is interesting because uh, so I'm going to kind of break it down and you're welcome to read through it and I actually highly encourage you to read it so you get the full context so the misunderstanding is that eating any meat is considered clean and in my previous video I did mention you know the diff that God sees a difference between clean and unclean there's an actual and there's also scientific backup to the descriptions made in scripture um, so in Acts 10.10, 10, it says, And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they, they made ready, he fell into a trance. So Peter is in this room, and he's getting super hungry, but as he's preparing, um, or as the people were preparing the food for him, he goes into a trance. And in Acts 10.11-13, to 13, it continues, And he saw well, and saw heaven open, so obviously I'm referring to Peter, uh, and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, 
and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came to a, a, a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. So here he sees this sheet fall down or a blanket. And inside this blanket is just a ton of unclean animals. And God tells him, okay, or he hears a voice and says, rise and eat. And Peter's like, Peter responds in Acts 10, 14 to 16. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. At what God hath clean, cleansed, that call not thou common. That was very specific. This was done thrice. And the vessel was received up again unto heaven. So meaning that this vision of this, you know, um, blanket coming down, it happened three times. But it's interesting. It doesn't say, uh, he does say, you know, go ahead, Peter, kill and eat. But then what God says is what you call, like uh, what God has cleansed, don't call common. So the story continues and unfolds. And we can go to Acts um, 10, 17. Now, while Peter doubted himself uh, that this was a vision, which he had, see, uh, had, had seen, he was thinking, what should it mean? Right as he's thinking this, uh, Cornelius, who was considered a Gentile, arrives at Peter's home. So then there's this whole extension of like Peter talking to this Gentile and how this Gentile was told to come to his house. Um, in Acts 10, 28, Peter then realizes the interpretation of the vision. He then says, And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one another of a nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. And he's referring right back to that vision that he has where it says what God has cleansed don't call um, them unclean basically you know that shall not call common so then he realized oh so this is what the vision was about he's pertaining to mankind he was trying to show a correlation between clean and unclean meats and how we should treat each other and not create a separation between um, different races, different cultures, like that should be broken. That's not how we're supposed to treat. And now I'm going to step it now, now that I've said that I'm going to step into kind of like the vegan, um, movement where I sort of noticed that I felt like, and it was a bit of a turnoff for me actually. And not to say that I, that's the reason why I kind of drew away from it. Cause that wasn't it. But, um, veganism kind of has this movement of, treating people who don't think like them or don't eat like them almost pharisaical like it's almost like oh we're higher or better than you but we're gonna treat everyone else who doesn't like they're insignificant and that was a big turnoff for me that I could see like how can you sit there and say that you care about the animals more than you care about human beings and it's so interesting because here we see kind of that you know um example set in scripture where here we see Peter kind of not wanting to associate with the Gentiles and then he says uh, then he gets this vision and this dream telling him no don't these are my people don't don't call the Gentiles unclean they are cleansed and they are sanctified by me and so there was that difference but we also I need to emphasize that Nowhere in scripture do we see Peter ever, after that dream, eat anything unclean. He, there's, no, there's nowhere else where he then says, oh, then after that, I participated in just eating any meat. So um, that, that is a very important thing that I kind of wanted to encourage. So even in Acts 11, when Peter is accused of hanging out with the Gentiles, Peter actually recounts his dream and and describes the whole um, uh, event with Cornelius coming over to him. And he then again reemphasizes that, you know, that we're not supposed to have this division among human beings. 
and that there is still um, unclean and unclean laws. He, they absolutely, he saw that there was a distinction of what God was telling him. It had nothing to do with um, uh, nullifying the uh, kosher laws. It was rather more of uh, extending God's grace and mercy to the Gentiles and to have them continue what was supposed to have happened uh, from the very beginning. All humanity working together and us loving one another. There was no no um, racial discrimination, you know, and that's what God was trying to do and what Jesus did while he was on earth. He was breaking those barriers of racial division and um, prejudice. And so that is what that was. And so to answer that question, um, is eating meat a sin? Obviously the answer is no, but are there certain ideal diets, um, that have been given to us? And, you know, I believe that still God does have an intention for us to eat clean meats. Um, but is there an ideal diet, uh, than the permissive one? I will tell you a little bit more about that if you're interested. So that's what will segue us into our next video on the ideal diet that God has um, for us beyond the permissive one that he's allowed after the flood. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope that kind of clarifies uh, the Peter's vision and also encourages you to do your research and study and um, I just hope that you live, thrive, and be healthy and continue to grow in your faith and in your walk. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye.